Okay, before we get into some of the examples for this section, I first want to just do a quick review of the law of exponents and also equal basis property. And then the next video we'll have examples uh, based on some of these. First of all, laws of exponents are very important because they're used a lot in this particular section. So in the notes, I actually show the general term, uh, what each one is, but I just wanted to just show you the examples here to highlight each of the different rules that we have for the law of exponents. So first of all, the first rule says that if you've got the same base, so it's very important that you have exactly the same base uh, here. If you multiply these two, then what you're doing is you're adding the exponents together. So the base is the same and you're just taking 5 plus 3 and that's going to give you 2 to the 8th power. That's the first rule. The second rule says if you're subtracting exponents, then you're going to, or if you're, if you're dividing rather, if you're dividing exponents here, that means you're going to be subtracting. So if I have these, they're both going to be the same. I have my exponent, I'm always going to take the top one, subtract the bottom one, and I would get 2 to the 3rd or 8 uh, as the answer for that one. This one is when you have a power inside of another one. So basically you have a power that's being raised to another power. If you have that, two to the three to the fifth power, uh, two to the third to the fifth power, you're going to get 15 as a result on that one. So again, you're multiplying the exponents together. Three times five will give you 15. Next one is if you, you're allowed to distribute the five into each of these. So you have two to the fifth times three to the fifth. Likewise, you can do it with division as well. If you have four, uh, the whole thing is squared, you can square the top number and square the bottom number, you get 16 over 25. What does not work here is you're not allowed to take the sum or the difference of two numbers and then square them. So in other words, if I have something like this, two plus three, and that's, being, that's squared, that is not equal to two squared plus three squared. I'm not al allowed to do that because if I were to work this part out separately, I would get 5 squared, that's 25. But clearly if I add these numbers together separately, I'm not going to get 25 for that. I get 4 plus 9, that's 13. So I know for sure that that does not work. So inside, you can only have multiplication or division in order for that distributive property to work with your exponents. This does not work there. Uh, next, we have any number raised to any, if any time you have a 1 raised to any number, you're always going to get 1 for a result. So 1 to anything is going to give you 1. If you have any number raised to a power of 0, you always will get 1 for the answer there. It doesn't matter what you put in here, you could have a pi, pi to the 0, or 2000 to the 0, it doesn't matter. Even decimals to the 0, that's still going to give you a 1. For this, we have a couple rules that have to do with the negative exponents. 4 raised to negative 2, that's the same thing. If I take that 4 and put it below the division bar, then that means that negative there becomes positive. So I get 1 over 4 squared, and that would be 1 over 16. For this, if you have a fraction that's raised to a negative number, you can flip the fraction on the inside, and when you flip the fraction, it ends up giving you a positive number on the outside. And then we can do the same thing that we did here. 3 squared is 9, 2 squared is going to give you 4. So that's the, the list of laws of exponents that should be reviewed, but just in case you haven't seen that for a while, this should get you up on the same page here, laws of exponents. Uh, we also have equal basis property. Now equal basis property is something that we're going to do the next few examples that you, you have in this, for these videos. Uh, we'll actually cover this particular property here. I call it equal basis property. You're probably not going to see that in your textbook. It's something that I refer to. So as I go through uh, future problems on these videos, I'll be referring back to the equal basis property. Uh, and that's what this is. If you have two numbers that have exactly the same base, a and a here, a to the u and a and equals a to the v, if I know that the two bottom numbers are the same, that means I can set the, the two top numbers equal to each other. So for instance, if I have something like uh, 4 to the x equals 16, let's say I have something like this, I want to get both these to be the same base. So therefore, 4 to the x would be here, and then 16 I can write as 4 squared. I'm making both of them the same bases, so therefore if this one matches that one, that means then I can set the exponents equal and I would get x is equal to 2 for that. That's how this property would work. The 4's right here would represent the a's that you have there. And so if the bottom numbers are already equal to each other, you're going to set the exponents equal and you would get 2 as your answer. So that's going to be used for solving 
uh, a lot of different problems that are written out in that form and we'll take a look at those next.